stop. We're almost there. This way. It should be over here. There. This is it. This is it. Oh, imagine if we can prove the existence of V8 SUVs. <laughs> X5. That's an M. That's, That's an M. M. That's a V8. There should be another one. Hold on. It says it would be here. Oh my God, there it is. Hold on. I can see it already. GLE 63. 63. Wait, hang on. S. What do you mean S? Oh mean no. S. Oh, and this is an- Let me guess. It's competition. competition. We've been played again. These aren't even good forgeries. X5M competition. Can you imagine if that actually existed though? Imagine how compromised the ride would be. It'd be terrible. It'd be terrible. And a GLE 63S yeah. AMG. Like the road noise? It'd be atrocious. Unbearable. Unusable as SUVs. You spent all of our credits on that map. <sighs> I'm sorry. Well, the hunt continues. Yep. This is worse than that time we found a Ferrari SUV. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is what happens when Mercedes, BMW, and Audi turn their mid-size SUVs into performance monsters. And we're talking serious performance. Under each of these hoods lies a twin turbo V8. From the Merc, we get 603 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. From the Audi, 591 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. And the BMW is the horsepower leader, with 617 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. Clearly, these are all-out, balls-to-the-wall performance things. But the question is, at what cost? Oh yeah, no, we actually have that information. As spec, they'll all run you about $150,000 Canadian. What? No, no, I mean like like metaphorical cost. Never mind. Oh, and a huge thank you to HJ Faf Audi for a chance to feature their 2021 RSQ8, and to our friends at Mercedes-Benz Oakville for letting us enjoy the GLE 63S. If you're new to Throttle House, no, no. we do car reviews, track tests and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. Mercedes was the first to do a high performance SUV back in the day. They didn't half-ass it back then with the ML55 and they really have not half-assed it here. This is the first AMG 63 motor to get their EQ Boost starter alternator, which helps you set off smoother. So just the way this engine pulls is ridiculous. And obviously it's an AMG. So there's a full on thunderstorm behind me. No engines have this type of baritone noise other than AMGs. Oh, it's just so good. On the upshift. Oh, I'm in the full race mode right now. It's like a howitzer outside. Just crazy. X5M competition doesn't mess around. Listen to that V8 roar. in a ways that SUVs should never be able to. It takes corners in ways that would put my Audi S4 through the trees. And that's cornering on the winter setup. On the performance tires, the steering gets sharper still. And I would argue the sharpest of the three vehicles here. Fuck a roller coaster. At five and a half thousand pounds each and a 3.8 seconds to 100 kilometer an hour time, all of these vehicles have way more performance than you could ever need. So what we have to do today is assess them amongst each other 
in that upper echelon of cars, which takes a very specific paintbrush. But where BMW really shine through, and they have done in every time we've done a German Trio video, whether it's the S4 N340 i or the C63 M4s, their transmission tuning is excellent. Whatever I'm thinking is the gear that it puts it in. And it gives me exactly the amount of power I want, which right now is about 600 horsepower odd. <laughs> This has AMG dynamic engine mounts, which react to how the car is driving to either make it more intense and aggressive or smooth it out. Also, the adaptive dampers change quite a lot. In race mode right now, this car is flat through the corners. The turn-in is crisp. It's just, a, it's just a beast. It drives like a car. It's just impossible to deny that Mercedes has, has somehow taken a large, comfortable, I've driven the normal GLE, it's very nice and soft. And they've turned it into a, what feels like a sports car. I'm way too high up off the ground, but it feels like a sports car. This doesn't even have the e-active body control. It's just got AMG level dampers and springs and it's so well controlled. Just in here, no, nope, that's amazing. It turns in the front and so sharp and I like AMG steering lately. It's a bit light, but it's very accurate and there's just enough feedback that it satisfies me. All right, the RSQ8. This has the least horsepower of the three. Almost 600 horsepower, as it says on the website. <laughs> almost 600, what does that even mean? In the same way that James is almost six feet tall. I make fun, but it's really bloody quick. It really is. Now, everyone likes to compare this to an Urus. We've driven the Urus quite a lot on the track and on the road, and I can tell you, unequivocally, this drives nothing like an Urus. There's some similarities in the sound, but the Urus is a, a riot. It's a violent machine. This is not like that. Much more subtly tuned in a way that I very much appreciate after those other two cars. The engine, very smooth. Nice V8 noise, actually. A little bit more shouty than I'm used to from Audi. Good volume. Paddle shifters are very quick, but if you put it in automatic mode and drop it down into comfort or just a normal mode, it's really hesitant to give you a gear. It's kind of strange. It smooths everything out for you. But from a performance perspective, I have to say, this is a very competent vehicle. The damping is good. The steering is accurate, if a little bit too light. And overall, it does what you want it to. And it really does move. But no matter what, I end up finding myself liking about any of these cars, there's still a glaring problem with the concept of these SUVs. To illustrate what I mean, I brought out James and some marshmallows. We all love marshmallows, they're delicious, oh, right? Delicious, yeah. Yeah, put two in your mouth, please. This is a normal SUV, like an X5 or a GLE 450. So James, at this point, is still enjoying marshmallows, as anyone would, because uh, they're delicious, yeah. yeah. Now, put two more marshmallows in your mouth. Okay. Now, now this is the X5 uh, M and the 53 AMG. Mm. But it doesn't stop there. James, put three more marshmallows in your mouth. Three? Yeah, three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, three. I, don't I don't think you can either. That's the point. What happens at this point is that we really start to compromise James's enjoyment of the marshmallows. And we might just get to a point where it all falls apart. Yeah, you okay? Mm -hmm. No, you got. See, now this is a high performance SUV, like a GLE 63S or an X5M competition. See what I mean? But in order to find out which of these SUVs sacrifices the least amount of comfort for its performance, I decided to run a little test. I'm going to sit in the back of each, like a kid on the way to school, and draw a little picture while well, James drives us down a back road at a consistent speed. The most compromised drawing is the most compromised SUV. All right, what are you gonna draw, by the way? It's just a portrait of you, actually, yeah. 
That's very concerning. Okay, here we go. All right. Oh my god. Now, my guess... What mode are you in right now? Seriously. This is comfort. No, this it is, is comfort. not. Yes, it is. Okay. So my guess is that this is going to be like up there with the BMW in terms of how bad the drawing is going to be. The Audi is definitely the most. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm doing my best here. It turns in oh, well. I did that wrong. But there's definitely still oh, some. It's hurt. a performance car. Even in comfort mode, this is a performance car. But we're. Oh, I'm getting jostled side to side here. Even though it's a bit. It feels like a performance car even in comfort, but it's not bad. Like you could drive this for a while. The seats are quite comfortable. My problem is the transmission. Yes. Can't decide where it wants to be in comfort mode, even if you, you gradually press on the gas from a from a traffic light, it, it kind of jolts. Where, and in sport mode as well, when you push on it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it hops around and then gets you there. But once it's there, you're deep into that AMG V8. And yes. It's, it's arguably the most exciting engine of the three. And this is a, this is a, a, actually a freshly paved, but back road, a B road, you guys would call it, right? And it's a bit loud in here. Yeah, they, this, they, they've gone more sporty than this, than refined. Like these windows aren't even double glazed like they are in the Audi. Right. The road noise is quite loud. I've like finished my, my portrait of you in the AMG. Shall we grab the next car? Yeah, let's do the Audi. Okay. All right, time for the Audi. Yes. This now, immediately this, more this, subtle. Yeah, it's way more refined, way calmer. But they, I think the tuning in this is a bit too calm. Like, the most dynamic sport RS mode in this doesn't feel that dissimilar on the, on the throttle to the comfort mode in the GLE. That's the true. Event. I will say though, interestingly, from my perspective, this is not that much different in terms of like being jostled around back here. Really? This is a very unique perspective. I, I, I've never tested a, the suspension of a car like this before. As the driver, this feels calmer to me. I feel calm. But like how much of that could be engine and, susp and, and, oh, and, and transmission tuning? Absolutely. It does feel, yeah, I understand when you just focus on the be jostling. Just the ride, yeah. This is a much calmer car as a driver. But when you get on it, well, actually, that's not even true. When you get on it, there's a bit of a delay. But then when, yes. it, when, when it gets on it, after you've got on it, it goes. <laughs> Consumer advice. It's very quiet. It's very quiet and calm now, yeah. Very quiet. Yeah, no, this is, and I'm maintaining speed, the same speed as the other Same others. speed as the other ones. Everything is exactly the same, both com comfort mode and auto and all of them, right? It's still calm. This, yeah, you're, all you're, factors you're looking pretty good in this particular portrait, I will uh, say. No, I did. It depends on what the... I uh, did shower a couple of days ago, so... <laughs> okay, now for the final one, the X5M yeah. competition. Yep. And you're lucky because we're on winter, uh, winter setup right now. So yes. we're on smaller wheels and more rubber. Okay. And you live with this. You live I with, live this, with this for a week and I hate on the, it. On the summer setup. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I feel um, like it would have been a guarantee. This is, yeah, this is, doesn't feel as harsh. At, well, I say that, but then we just did that bump right there. Yeah. The biggest problem with this car is, is uh, the highway. Yes, it's because the steering, right? Yeah, I remember yeah. Carsten drove us to London to film the Escalade video we did. Yep. And by the end, his like his hand was in pain because he had to keep the, <laughs> the steering wheel steady the entire time. Because the steering is so fast. It does oh, feel oops. good out on these back roads, though, in this car. Yeah, from your perspective. <laughs> this does comfort better than the Mercedes, but not as well as the Audi, as far as, like, transmission tuning. Yeah, but it's the side-to-side -side jostling that this one gives you Yes. that's making it difficult for I, me to I do think, it. I am so impressed with BMW's engine tuning. M340i, this, I think they've, they've nailed it. The Audi doesn't come on harsh enough when you put your foot down. The Mercedes is a bit overzealous. BMW have found the perfect middle here. It could do with a more fun exhaust though. The AMG is still the most riotous. Okay. And the Audi's the most subdued. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the M cars lately, like their V8s, have a rumble, but that's it. But they all, right? get, they all get on it like stink, all three of these. But something about the transmission in this, to me, is more telepathic than the than the other two. Yeah, the shifts are all very fast in all of them, but in auto mode, which is when you're realistically going to use these. Oh, I don't even put this in shifting mode. Right, I do. I like shifting these, but because you're a loser. Because I'm a loser. No one shifts these. Well, then why would you buy the M or the AMG? Because when you put your foot down. Oh my God! It oh. does that. Lucky I wasn't drying at that point. Okay, oh, I parked close. I have the results here. Oh, I'm excited. Yes. All right. Uh, Put this down. You hold this, okay? Put yep. that. Put that down on the thing there, so people can see it. 
Yeah, that's the RSQ8. This looks like Stewie Griffin from Family Guy. Yeah, yeah, this is just how I see you, is a, a little British baby. Um, anyway, so pay attention. This is important. Yeah. This is science. Yeah. Okay, RSQ8, that looks like you. AMG, a little bit less like you, and there's the X5. Oh, okay. Okay, so the reason was is that the X5 would never, it just it just kept jostling back and forth. It's amazing how similar the AMG and the RSQA is, given yes. what you said. Like, yes. As smooth as the ride feels, it's, it's what, obviously got some jostle. Well, we realized that the RSQ8, is, is, part of its smoothness is not just its ride, it's its transmission and engine, right? So in terms of ride, the AMG and the RSQ8 are very similar. Very similar. And the X, it's just a league of its own. I think that's credit to the AMG, actually. I think Mercedes have figured out a way to yes. keep it as sporty as possible while still could reasonably controlled, yeah. but still, we're still compromised. The whole I point still, is I still never want, I never want to do this again. Okay. Okay. Next video, we'll do it again. <laughs> Styling, can we... Uh, I'll draw you, you big Canadian... Yeah, I'm going to draw you as Barney, you stupid dinosaur. <laughs> okay. Now, let's take a look at these. First of all, I want to point out something very important. This grill has become fine. Yes, and this is black as well, so it, it, it blends it, in. It blends in. But this, but like, compared to what BMW is doing now, especially with yeah. the new iX, you did a hilarious uh, Instagram story. Right? <laughs> yeah. You follow on Instagram. This looks completely acceptable. I don't think the BMW looks bad. No, it's got the M mirrors. It's got. It's a great looking. It, it accomplishes the task of being an X5 M competition. Yeah. RS Q8. Like I said about the RS6, it does have express toll route transponders glued to the front of the grill. I don't know what this I'll, I'll agree, it's not the perfect execution of that technology. No, this has a carbon fiber package as well, right? $5,000. $5,000. It's a little bit over the top, I think. Because, because it's not that obvious, and the whole part of this car is that it's subdued. Also, elephant in the room, sorry. Yeah. And before we get rubbish for this in the comments. Yeah. It would be more accurate to compare this to the GLE 63S Coupe and the X6M. X6M, However, kind of. we yeah. haven't got the GLE 63S Coupe yet in North America. No. And BMW so we figured didn't this have an X6M for us. And an RSQ8 yeah. can't come in the normal SUV shape. So right. we're just going to leave this as the odd one out. It is smaller. It it's is smaller, smaller. It's a bit subdued. But do you know what it isn't as good looking as? Is the RS6, which is basically we were go the same thing. Yes. It's got all the same stuff in the same interior room, more or less. And it's a beautiful But in wagon. reference to these two vehicles, these two. These two. Oh, these two. What, do you like it? No. Um, <laughs> I, I think that this is probably the best looking overall here. Do it's, you agree? This is the most flashy though, right? Yeah. That's the small town, one of the Toronto the in way. Yeah. Yeah. Small town, what are you talking about? It, this, is, this has got Drew the- is a baby. This, okay. has, <laughs> this has got the Panamericana grill, which really like, just like, you know, the front end. Just, just really puts it yeah, through it's, the it's, yeah. just, it's through the ceiling in yeah, terms of it really uh, makes it what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but one the, thing that's very cool about the Audi though that neither of these cars can boast. Okay. Is frameless windows. Oh. Why didn't I notice that? When was that? When was the last time you saw that on an SUV? I'm not sure I've ever seen that on an SUV. I like it. That's really neat, actually. All right. Well, let's continue with the uh, the gaudiness and let's go have a look at the inside of this. <laughs> okay. All right. I said gaudy. It is unfair because I actually think it's quite fun in here. Fun. It's also gaudy. It's fun. <laughs> it's it's, it's forty. Okay, it's fun. We got this, red on the seats. We got red on the seats. We got this large amount of carbon fiber, which is how much money? Twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred bucks. And we have a crazy AMG steering. This wheel. This is about as busy as the AMG steering wheel can get. This, this is, is, is almost a thousand bucks. Yeah, this is about as busy as. Uh, a, a Mercedes interior can get. So I just lived with the GLS, right? Yeah, yeah. this and looks very familiar. It's very, very familiar because obviously this is the GLE interior, which is very nice visually. I think it's great, but there is an upper limit to how much sensory input I can deal with in in a car. This is over the and limit. And this is just past the limit. Ooh, yeah, interesting. Like like I like the screens. I like the thumb stuff, but like there's just too much happening in this car, yeah. especially now with the shiny carbon fiber and all the. Yeah. It's just, I kind of like how yeah. fun it is. It's fun. This has the Burmester sound, which is standard. But it doesn't have the high end. It doesn't have the high end. So we get Mustang plastic. I don't mind that. It's fine. Listen. It actually sounds good. The sound of Mustang. But it's like $8,000 to upgrade it. And I, I've, I've really enjoyed the sound system. So I don't, yeah? know, if, I don't okay. know if I'd spend that. I've got the Alcantara on the roof. I really like that. Yeah. But no, this is, I like the GLE interior. I think this design is, is a win. This is nice and solid. Crazy ambient lighting. From, from the inside, does this have 150? Is this 150 grand? Yes. Okay. All right. Audi? Yeah. Okay. Interior space. 
must be noted. Yes. Is not much different to the RS6. The RS6. No, I agree. But this is the coupe form, right? So the GLE 63S would be slightly compromised in that sense, as would the X6M, and it is. Yes. These seats are similar to the uh, similar to GLE. They're not as bolstered on the on the on the edges, and no. so I actually fit in them better. I find that the the GLE squeezes me a bit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this has got a lot of Alcantara and really nice stuff, and you're like, this is really cool. But yes. you always. Hit like to rag on Audi for a good reason because yeah they've made this weird decision where if you if you buy an Audi and you want a flat bottom steering wheel you deny yourself a heated steering wheel which is so dumb it's silly because why wouldn't in a hundred this is a hundred and sixty thousand dollar give or take SUV that doesn't have a heated steering wheel I, just, I accidentally just put the suspension up I, I pushed a button and it that's such a flex uh, I accidentally just quickly oh, yeah, suspended uh, my car oops, yeah, it's yeah. on bags it's on bags yeah slammed um, um, but yeah it's a strange decision however Beyond the heated steering wheel, I absolutely love the wheel. And once again, I'd make that decision. I'd go flat bottom. No, it's it's. it's <laughs> I like to, would, I'd yeah. like to punish no, myself. This is a beautiful steering wheel. Okay, so the best part about this visually for me is that, well, we get the blacks and the screens and the screens everywhere. At least we have a solid volume. Now. This isn't this isn't over the line for you, like the like the, uh, the Mercedes is. No, it's not. This it's is clean. this is very simple to figure out. It's okay. so Audi, isn't it? You, it is, but you do have to point out that any amount of fingerprint leaves a fingerprint. No, you could point it's out. Gross. You could point it out. Point, but if you point pointed out, it out, 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 <laughs> out, it feels weird to say. Yes, this is fingerprint palace. Yeah, but, but I want to say that the black levels on these screens, all of them are unbelievable. Like, literally, the black goes from the black piano black plastic into the screen, and you cannot tell. It's beautiful. I really like this interior. And I think that that nice. the execution of the haptic feedback is wonderful. Yep. The feeling yep. on your fingers. And it's solid. Hardly any noise, right? So, so, based on the quality here, then, yeah. if any of your friends you know, bought an Audi, Despite their lack of driving prowess compared to I don't know the GLE, but like you'd support them, one hundred percent, because of the things it does do. You, because you didn't, you didn't with me, so don't say yes. Okay. BMWs. Yeah, the BMWs. Now we're in a unique situation here where yes. this isn't like we haven't only had this for the last few days. We had this a few months ago. Yes, thank you, BMW, for continually giving us this car yes. until we were able to make this comparison happen. <laughs> this, this seat has softened in that time. Yes, one of, my, one of my biggest complaints was how stiff it was. In this one, it's stiff now. And that's stiff. And it's stiff because it hasn't been worked in by journalists. So thumbs. that's good. So you can work in this. The original complaint that would have been it's too stiff. Yeah. Just the bolsters are still too, too stiff, though. Do you think the so? The bolsters are softer in those. On this the is, bum? These are really locked into this car. It's performance, it, James. In true BMW fashion, this is equally as solid as Audi. Yes. Uh, this, this, is a, this is a bit quickier than some BMWs we've been in, but but like the, the fit and finish of everything is, is top notch. I think BMW do a fa fantastic job in here. The Bowser Wilkins stereo looks amazing. Yes. Um, speaking of stereos, the stereo in the RSQ8 wasn't super impressive, was no, it? No, which is weird because yeah. the Urus was so amazing. Was, it was like I had a friend in, who sat in the Urus and he yeah. listened to Elton John and actually cried to Rocket Man. Yeah, no, that was you though. It's a magical song. Okay, so the infotainment in all of these is, okay, here's my order of infotainment that I like. Okay. Audi, Mercedes, BMW. Okay, but I, we're not gonna dwell on this because we've talked about this a million times, but at least in the M models, when you push the M button, it, well, it, well, it does do it sometimes, do M, M mode. There yeah. you go, you get, you get the center gauge cluster, Double which tap. I do like, yeah. All these vehicles, though, have quite stiff seats. Yes. And in their lower trims, like the 50i and the GLE 450 we drove, More plush. I think, and that's it's, it's better plush. Yeah. Like name a super. Can you name a super SUV that does perfectly plush seats? Yeah, the Trackhawk. The Trackhawk. Yeah. I think it. I think that lands that better. It also has a better ride. Yeah, I don't think anyone gets in these and wants performance and then says. Now make it uncomfortable. <laughs> no, I know. And I think yeah. the Trackhawk does the best job. The Trackhawk is out of these three, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Only in seats. Yeah, no, and the whole ride and the whole experience of that car, I like it better. <laughs> Sorry. Assuming your interest extends only to the German options though, in our mind, the GLE 63S offers the best blend of performance and comfort, with the RSQ8 leaning on the calmer, more sleeper side of things, and the BMW the most performance focused. Thomas, around town, across the country, assuming you want performance, what's your pick? If I can't pick a wagon? Yes, if you can't pick a wagon. Fine, the RSQ8. Simply because it's just a Q8 until you want it to be an RSQ8. And you? 
Yep, yeah, I agree. The X5M competition never stops being the competition version. And the GLE 63S, even though it is the most fun one here probably, would only be my pick after four cups of coffee. Truthfully though, I have a lot more love for the lower trims. And with the money left over, I'd get an actual sports car. Okay, you don't even, see the, you don't even know, I, I drew, it's a portrait of you. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Okay, ready? So, all three, same road, same artist, me. All right, here we go. Ready? I'm excited, yeah. All right, here you go. That's, that's you number one, that's the X5. What's yeah. this? This is a portrait of you. That looks like Stewie Griffin from Family Guy. Yeah, this is how I see you. It's just a little British baby. He said he wasn't going to say it. I can't. Come on, what's the matter? I work as hard as anyone. I know. He said he wasn't going to use the B word. What, British? No, baby. What do you mean? Come on now, calm down. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is this too weird? Uh, it's a little weird. Even for an outro? <laughs> yeah.